This man is making a steelyard, a form of balance dating back to the Roman times. The item to be weighed is suspended from the shorter arm of a level, which turns on a fulcrum, and a counterpoise is caused to slide upon the longer arm to produce equilibrium. Its place along the arm, which is notched and graduated, indicates the weight. Today we are going to talk about balancing the scale. What do I mean? We are talking about the steelyard, the measuring scale we all carry around within us, by which we measure justice, fairness, and equity. We aren't talking about the blindfolded woman holding scales and a sword. We are talking about fair play, forgiveness, pardon, lenience, grace and mercy. Jesus had a lot to say about this subject, and today we're going to talk a little bit about that. Do not judge so that you will not be judged, for in the way that you judge, you will be judged, and by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. When he says, do not judge, he isn't talking about discernment. He's talking about contempt and condemnation. These attitudes betray an inward feeling of superiority, as if one is more important or significant than those he despises. The danger, as Jesus points out, comes at the final judgment when the arrogant man will be judged with his own standard of measure, and presumably he won't fare very well under that condition. Solomon warned us about using differing weights, which are an abomination to the Lord. A false scale is not good, but you might ask, how am I using a false scale? My scale is false if my weight says one pound, but the actual weight is over or under that amount. In fact, I might carry around two sets of weights, depending on which outcome I want. When we measure the injustice of others, we use one set of weights, but when we measure our own injustice, we use a different set of weights. When you sin against me, I find that your sins against me are very significant. Your injustice against me is very weighty. But when I sin against you, I find that my sins are lighter, less significant, and not very weighty at all. This is because I carry around two sets of weights. I use one set of weights so that my sins against you appear to be inconsequential, and I use another set of weights so that your sins against me appear grave and serious. Our self-assessment constantly needs adjusting with a keen eye and an accurate set of weights, which are honesty, contrition, humbleness, and an enlightened perspective on human worth. Paul the Apostle exhorts us to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought. In practice, this turns out to be more difficult than we might first anticipate. Thinking more highly of ourselves comes naturally and easily. Gaining an accurate self-assessment takes effort and practice and a willingness to see ourselves the way we truly are. In society, some people are deemed to be more important than others. But in the eyes of the Lord, the truly significant individual is the one who repents, confesses sins, remains humble, and carries an honest assessment of the inner man, as Paul puts it. Blessed is the man in whose spirit there is no deceit, says King David. And he also told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and was praying this to himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, swindlers, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I pay tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector standing some distance away was even unwilling to lift his eyes to heaven but was beating his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. I tell you this man went to his house justified, rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus tells that parable comparing a Pharisee with a tax collector, and the impact of the parable will be lost unless we understand that during that time, 
The opinion of general society was that the Pharisee was the good guy, and the tax collector was the bad guy. Naturally, most of us see ourselves as one of the good guys, so when we hear this parable, do we imagine ourselves as the Pharisee, the good guy, or the tax collector, which society condemns as the bad guy? If one is reading the New Testament on a regular basis, one notices that Jesus is critical of the Pharisees a lot. For this reason, I suspect that most of us imagine ourselves to be the sinner rather than the Pharisee, since Jesus is critical of the Pharisee and approving of the sinner. But Jesus has put his reader in a double bind of sorts. On the one hand, society counts the Pharisee as the good guy, and if I want society to count me as the good guy also, then I will live the righteously pious life of the Pharisee. I don't want society to count me among the sinners. On the other hand, if I want Jesus to count me as the good guy, then I will want to emulate the attitude of the sinner. That is, Jesus isn't suggesting that we go and sin as often as possible. No, he would say, go and sin no more. But above all that, he wants me to be honest about myself. Who am I in relation to God, and who am I in relation to my fellow human beings? But at first glance, we aren't sure what the Pharisees did wrong. Not only is he keeping the commandments, his prayers are filled with thanksgiving. On the surface, the Pharisee looks like the good guy. So why does Jesus criticize the Pharisee? Earlier we read Jesus' exhortation not to judge others, and I asserted that Jesus was talking about contempt. Here in this story, the Pharisee had contempt for sinners. The Pharisee thanks God that he is not like other men, and that right there is his mistake. In fact, he is like other men, in the sense that he also needs mercy and forgiveness from God. We all do. We are all sinners. We all need forgiveness and redemption and pardon from a merciful and gracious God. But only those sinners who are willing to acknowledge that truth, approaching God empty-handed, are those who go home justified. To balance our scale, we need honest weights. Differing weights are an abomination to the Lord. Do we honestly expect God to justify those who carry around wicked scales and a bag full of deceptive weights? Maybe I do. For when I sin against you, I want God to forgive me. But when you sin against me, I want God to punish you. What am I, a cheater? I guess. I guess I would be a cheater if I carried around different dishonest weights. I would be a dishonest cheater if I measured your sins with one set of weights and my sins with another set of weights. In order to balance the scale, we need to start at the beginning. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man. Genesis 9-6 Here God declares the basis for his stance against murder. Every human being ever created, he created in his image. And for this reason, each human being is highly significant and worthy of existence. None of us have the right to take someone else out of existence because human existence came about by divine edict and shall not be violated without consequence. For this reason, we can conclude that I am no more but no less significant than you. I am no more but no less worthy of love than you. I am no more but no less responsible for my actions than you. I am worthy of your love just as you are worthy of mine, and I am worthy of your attention just as you are worthy of mine. We balance the scale by using only one set of fair weights, just as Jesus said. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever hits you on the cheek, offer him the other also. And whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. Give to everyone who asks of you. And whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. If we love those who love us and hate those who hate us, we carry different weights. One set of weights for those who treat us well, 
and another set of weights for those who treat us badly. Will God justify wicked scales and a bag of deceptive weights? Therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Who am I in relation to God? I'm a sinner in need of mercy and forgiveness. Who am I in relation to you? We are both made in the image of God. We are both worthy of dignity, respect, and love most of all. My love is to be a perfect love as God's love is perfect. I am not only to love those who love me, I am to love my enemies and pray for those who persecute me. If I want God to forgive me, I want to forgive others also. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful to your own studies. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.